Did you know that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world? It's true. Islam is the world's fastest growing religion. At least if you look at the right time frame. But what does this mean about the truth and the future of Islam? The answer may surprise you, so stay tuned as I examine why Islam is the most and fastest growing religion. If you've ever asked a Muslim why they believe Islam is true, they'll probably give you one of three answers. That the Quran contains amazing scientific knowledge that wasn't confirmed until centuries later. That Muhammad lived a morally perfect life. Or that the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. While the first two are obviously false, the third is at least nominally true. But what does it mean if Islam is the world's fastest growing religion? First, a quick note. In this video, I'll stick to the conclusions of my research. I'm working on a follow-up video that will examine the future of Christianity, Islam, and atheism in greater detail, so be on the lookout for that. From 2000 to 2015, Islam was the fastest growing faith in the world, growing at an average of 1.9% a year compared to the world average of 1.2% a year. But if Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, does that mean it's true? Obviously not. First of all, if we're just going by numbers, Christianity still has far more adherents than Islam, so apparently it is the world's most true religion. Second, growth rates vary over time. From 1970 to 2000, Taoism was the world's fastest growing religion. Does that mean that Taoism was the one true religion during that period? Third, Growth and numbers are terrible indicators of truth. There was a time when everyone believed the world was flat, but the idea was not any more true then than it is now. In 1840, there was approximately zero adherence to communism in the world. By 1985, communism controlled a third of the world, experiencing far more rapid growth than Islam, or any other idea in human history. But no one would argue that that growth proves the truth of communism. Fourth, the growth rate of Islam is falling faster than the world population growth rate, down from 2.8% a year from the period of 1970 to 2000. Does that mean that Islam has become less true as its growth rate has slowed? So Islam, being the world's fastest growing religion, has no bearing on its truth. What about that growth, though? Will Islam remain one of the fastest growing religions in the world? There are four factors that impact a religion's population the number of children born to adherents, the number of deaths, the number of people converting into the religion, and the number of people converting out of the religion. The growth rate of Islam is due entirely to the first two factors. Muslim women on average have more children, and the population is younger than the world average, meaning there are currently less deaths. The latter is obviously not a permanent feature of Islam. And the birth rate of Muslim women is falling as well, Soon, it may match the world average, negating any advantage Islam has in that category. As far as conversions go, Islam has a big apostasy problem. Well-known sheikh and Islamic teacher Bilal Phillips explains, If we don't take constructive steps to deal with this, it is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami that is going to hit our community in such a way that we will have a very difficult time standing. It will knock us over. You heard that right. There's an avalanche, a tsunami of apostasy, on the brink of knocking Islam over. The data in countries with religious freedom agrees. For example, in the United States, 31% of children born to Muslim families end up leaving the religion in their adulthood, more than double the apostasy rate experienced in Christianity. And the story is similar in Europe and everywhere else with religious freedom. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to what the well-known Mufti Menk has to say on the matter. As much as we say Islam is the fastest growing religion in the globe, I want to tell you something that I've studied. Mm. I've studied. Mm -hmm. yes. It's the religion with the large number of defectors, the largest number of defectors. That can't be right. Let's listen again. 
It's the religion with the large number of defectors, the largest number of defectors. Nope, we heard him right. He really is saying that Islam has the highest apostasy rate of any religion, and apparently he should know, since he says he studied the matter carefully. But the biggest problem for Islam isn't apostasy, but rather the number of converts it attracts. I looked at 20 years of survey data in the United States and found that out of over 20,000 people raised as Christians, just 20 had converted to Islam. Not 20%, or even 2%, just 20 people. That's 0.1%. European data shows a very similar pattern with around 0.1% of people raised as Christians converting to Islam. Influential Muslim scholar Yasser Qadi agrees. For every righteous and good brother we honor, 10 are thinking of leaving the faith. Do you realize that MSAs are alhamdulillah flourishing, but for every person who comes for Jumu'ah, at least three or four are simply not caring about Islam. For every person that comes, at least five or six are even doubting the faith. You heard that right. For every one convert, there are five or six Muslims on the verge of apostasy. Other Muslim leaders agree, lamenting how most converts never become active in Islam at all or leave within a few years. Why are people leaving Islam? Qadi explains. You are forced to think, and you realize that that building I inherited from Azhar and Medina is not a building that Allah revealed. It's a building that is constructed over centuries. In other words, the history of Muhammad was largely invented and is not actually factual. Qadi himself admits to experiencing doubts when exposed to academic criticism. Wallahi, I'll be honest with you. The shubuhat that I was exposed to at Yale, some of them I still don't have answers for. The reason why many of our ulama are so scared to go into these fields is because they are not qualified to answer every single shubuhat. Simply put, factual information causes doubts. Islam is the world's fastest going religion. But it's also a house of cards that can't stand up to scrutiny. Islam cannot survive without laws against apostasy. But don't take my word for it. Celebrity scholar Yusuf Karadawi explains. Translation. If they had gotten rid of the apostasy punishment, Islam would not exist today. Shocking honesty. The vast majority of the Muslim world lives in homogeneous countries with little or no religious freedom, and thus sees very little apostasy, at least publicly. However, the internet and brave voices like David Wood, Islam Critiqued, and Christian Prince are changing that. Muslim governments can no longer protect their citizens against information. Islam cannot stand up to scrutiny, and the scrutiny is coming. By 2010, there are more than 10 million Muslim converts to Christianity, and perhaps another 10 million who had left religion entirely. 60 years ago, that number was approximately zero. Indeed, there are likely more ex-Muslims alive now than in the entire history of Islam combined. And as you can see from the graph on the screen, that number is growing at an ever-increasing pace. The tsunami has arrived, and the house of cards is beginning to fall. Even in Saudi Arabia, where apostasy is punishable by death, and atheism is classified as an act of terrorism, approximately 5% of the population, or more than 1 million people, now admit to being atheist. Think things can't change quickly? Think again. The case of Indonesia is illustrative. Although Christian missionaries had been active in the country for decades, by 1965 there were very few Muslim converts. Then something dramatic happened. In September of that year, a communist group attempted to overthrow the government. The coup failed, but led to widespread civil unrest. The Muslim majority used this unrest as an opportunity to crack down on its enemies. In the ensuing violence, an estimated 1 million people died. However, an estimated 2 million Muslims converted to Christianity over the next six years. In surveys, the majority indicated that the violence practiced by Muslims was a major factor in their conversion to Christianity. Indonesia has continued to see significant apostasy since then, and is now home to more than half the world's ex-Muslims. Could something similar be happening today? 
We don't yet have much hard data, but anecdotally, Christian churches across northern Africa and the Middle East have experienced substantial surges in the aftermath of ISIS. When people see the true face of Islam, they don't like it and leave. At some point, a sufficiently large percentage of Muslims will actually be secret ex-Muslims. And at that point, the government will no longer be able to suppress their voice. When religious freedom arrives, Islam cannot survive. Losing 20 or 30 percent of your children to conversion, while attracting far less than 1 percent of other religions' children, is a recipe for disaster. Soon, Islam will no longer be the world's fastest growing religion, but rather the world's fastest shrinking religion, and the world will be a better place for it. The next time you hear this propaganda that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. The fastest growing religion in the world. Fastest growing religion. Fastest growing religion. Fastest growing religion. Fastest growing. Fastest growing. Fastest. 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 Fastest growing religion. Which is a load of utter nonsense. Be sure to send them to this video so they can learn the truth. Thanks for watching.